Hawk and Rumpa. It's chapter five of Talk and Rumpa. A really good podcast for Blind Cat and RJ Waters to talk about. Talk and Rumpa V3. The hit new game for Spike Chunsoft. And we're always right about things. Uh, that's Sometimes. right. Uh, before we get started this week, uh, some congratulations are in order. To RJ Waters and Blind Cat. Congratulations, Blind Cat. Is this another one of those fake congratulation things for some made up achievement? No, it's true. Um, this is the first uh, podcast we were recording since the first upload uh, of the first chapter. And we made the AV Club's top 100 podcast release this week list. Didn't we already do this joke? No, I figure if I just keep lying enough times, eventually people will just believe me for no reason. I call it the Kokichi Method. KokichiMethod.com. But for real times, this is the podcast where we talk about Danganronpa V3. So, if you haven't played Danganronpa 1 and 2... Uh, don't watch this. And if you haven't played Danganronpa V3 up to where we're at today, which is... Killing Chapter Life. Three. Deadly of Life. Deadly Life of Chapter 5. Don't watch this. Because I'm going to reveal the victim to you right now. In mm. this, on the screen, it's... Mm. Kokichi Oma, probably. Um, so, unlike RJ, I accidentally went a little bit ahead of myself. Yeah, uh, the blind cat method. He did this in Chapter 1, and it's, and because of that, he... He guessed the uh, the culprit correctly at the time. Um, yeah, because I also was able to take a good look at the scene a bit better before I stopped. Oh, no. Uh, uh, chapter uh, 1, that is. Before we dive into Chapter 5, Voyage Without Passion or Purpose, I gotta say, um, before we started this game, uh, my favorite two chapters in the franchise were Dongarapa's uh, 2's Chapter 4 and 5, the Funhouse Murder, and Nagito's Fake Suicide. And this Chapter 5 really gives that one a run for its money, uh, depending on how things turn out in the uh, investigation and trial phases, it could surpass that. So, I'm just going to say it right now, clearly this was a suicide murder. <laughs> uh, who did the suicide? Uh, Kaito. <laughs> um... So, I think this chapter, out of more more so than any others, I have a lot of notes. Because it was a uh, quite eventful lead-up to the uh, murder. I wasn't exactly sure that there was going to be one. I kept thinking that Kokichi is a good guy, over and over again. Uh, was but that... No, he just, he, he, he's doing it for everybody's sake, really. No, he really is doing it for everybody's sake this time. Is that what you thought bef right up until he gave them the weapons? It was like, oh, he did it. He, he's actually helping them out by giving them those weapons, or you, you were on to his scheme? Uh, I thought he just wanted to watch a good show. <laughs> so Monokuma brought up a good point early on mm -hmm. in this chapter in the cold opening. Why did those mono cubs exist? Because me, you made them. But why? Why do any of us exist? Hmm. That's a good, uh, Monokuma Theater-esque question. <laughs> I think in the end, the Monokub served no purpose. Well, it, I'm with Kokichi on this one. If Mew did create them, at, at some point, Mew was on the side of Kokichi slash Ultimate Despair? You think Kokichi is actually parts of Remnants uh, of Despair? <sighs> I don't buy it. Okay, I know he's lying about a lot of things, but I'm not he sure. He says access to a lot of flashback lights. <laughs> first. So, I mean, he can weave a pretty convincing tale, but I don't believe it. Yeah. Uh, for... And we also know that Miu will just make anything that anyone asks of her. So. Oh, yeah. Maybe. I mean, she might not even be on the side of... Uh, Ultimate despair. It's Maybe just the master someone just her. got her to make it, mm -hmm. or threatened to make her to make it. She could have been manipulated a thousand different ways. 
Oh, I had a look at the uh, the hidden Monokuma shelf. Mm -hmm. Um, it turns out the fifth accessory, the one you find during the uh, hidden during the trial mini games, is variable. Yeah, this one time it was not a shoe like you had before, but a light bulb. Like I just had an idea. Hmm. Other than that, I found uh, the four hidden Monokumas. I found three. Oh. Uh, no, it's rushing it? to catch up. Oh no! Did you find the one on the outside the ultimate detective lab? The Swap. one that was just flying around. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, did you find the one in the robot lab? Yep. Did you find the one that was sitting on the fourth floor statues outside the? Uh... Seriously? Yeah. I, every time I walked by there in previous chapters, I checked them because it looked like a place there would be one. I could not see one up there. I did look at them though. Oh, and then you did find the one in the uh, cosplay lab? Yeah, that one was painful to click on, but obvious yeah. to see. Try doing it on the Vita screen, why don't you? Yeah, the the one wearing a green hat is just sitting on the fourth floor statue. The one that doesn't have a head has a monokuma for a head. Mm. Once again, RJ takes the cake. Um, monokuma says Bayonara. Yeah, you, I you thought that was that? just him being a jerk. Isn't it because Angie's the mastermind? I thought it was just because he's stealing people's lines. Just for fun. Mm. Oh, that thing I said uh, in previous recordings, that thing that was being constructed behind the school that looked like it was going from the first floor to the fifth floor? Oh, yeah. It was, it was not... a thing that was going from the first floor to the sixth floor. It was not a tower at all. It was uh, a rocket ship. With no elevator. To the ultimate astronaut's lab. No elevator, though. Oh, that's right, it's a spiral staircase. Hmm. So, the ultimate astronaut's lab also had some controls in there. Yeah, I'm guessing it's also a real rocket. I'm guessing that is actually the controls for the space station they're on. Oh. That also makes sense. You would probably need those, huh? Yeah, I'm you'd probably want to have some kind of controls. That makes sense for why they have an ultimate astronaut. Um, it actually doesn't. How's that? Because, um, D16, they were not selected. Yeah, it seems that they, they were they, what was left. Yeah, they were the only 16 left, which answered my question that I had midway through the chapter, right after they revealed uh, that these 16 were chosen. Before we got the Why weren't they screened? Line. And what is with these ultimate abilities that they picked? Uh, more specifically, why did they choose Kibo when he is uh, incapable of helping repopulate the planet? I think it's because even though he cannot biologically reproduce, he can't die readily, and he's still a representative of humanity. I, he, he's human in other ways. He's good for record keeping? On that same note for Kibo, we're getting more details about this voice in his head. He's beginning to oh. sound a lot like Makoto. Did you uh, remember the line he said about uh, um, hope for our future? Yeah. Yeah, that's where I realized, oh, it sounds a lot like Makoto and Hajime. And also Kibo has the protagonist haircut. Future Foundation robot, I so guess. I'm guessing he is in contact or is a receiver for messages from the future foundation so you don't think the world outside is dead and that's his inner voice i do not you don't think that's earth either i do not do you mean either as in you agree with me as in are they on a different planet or are they on our earth right yeah. now neither you think that's just the outside of the space station that is another Dome. that is another area inside the space station mm. Constructed by the Exosols for the purposes of despair. It's just a large environment filled with no probably nitrogen, just something unbreathable to discourage exploration of it. Because, um, interesting thing when they opened up the door, the air from the inside wasn't sucked out. Yeah, it's not a vacuum, it's just oxygenless. No. As in, uh, they said that the Earth's atmosphere was destroyed. As part of Which this? means all gas would be escaping. But oh. That doesn't seem to be the case. 
Yeah, I'm I'm betting that's just a, a facsimile. A display. Uh along with a lot of things presented in that scene. Oh, that door. Uh we got two keys from the Monokuma this time. Uh one to the checker door from on the first floor. Mm -hmm. And one to this door way off past the Ultimate Inventors Lab. Right. Has that second door always been there? No. I've never noticed that or the path leading no, up to it. No, that giant building next to the Inventor's Lab was not being built or anything, but it was just suddenly there. What the hell? Doesn't that kind of contradict because there's no more exos? Because that was the hangar things? for the exos, so it should have been there the whole time. Yeah. But it wasn't. I wonder if there's going to be a reason for that. Uh, also <laughs> Maybe it's because Spike Chunsoft forgot to put it in at the beginning. <laughs> um, it also... Leaves one door without a key. Oh no, no, it doesn't because we used the se second key twice. Yeah, we used the second key twice, which led and, uh, to um, led to an an ultimate lab. So here's the thing about that ultimate lab: when you first approach yeah. it, uh, Monokuma says it's locked because the owner is already dead. Yes, he doesn't specify who the owner was. Mm-hmm. Uh, but he said it was uh, pretty boring that you could just. Uh, uh, eliminate it by uh, which I'm gonna call it. Uh, find out his process uh, of elimination so no, easily. Yeah, find out his um ultimate. Talent. But he did not confirm. Yeah, he did not confirm yeah. that that's Rontaro's lab. But then li later on, don't we see Kokichi alive after that? Hmm? We see Kokichi alive after that point. We see Kokichi alive a lot of times. But when we find that lab, it was for a long stretch of where's Kokichi? Haven't seen Kokichi. So I thought maybe Kokichi had died. And we oh. Were, and it was going to be Kokichi's lab. Because <laughs> it doesn't say it's Rantaro's. Uh, the icon looks kind of like a knife and a flower. It looks like a knife and what I thought was a bunch of blood splatter marks. And then on the door, there's like an outline of a bunch of weapons in blood. Yeah, so what I think it is, is Rantaro is obviously the ultimate... Butcher. <laughs> yeah. He's, uh, you know, that guy who uh, prepares all the meats. Isn't he just ultimate despair? What? And, um, Kokichi's an ultimate liar? Because we still have not found Kokichi's lab, and we've unlocked every door in the school. If anyone's title was actually ultimate despair, I am sure they would be completely barred from being sent off into space here for the gopher project. <laughs> well, the ultimate despair always has like a cover talent, like ultimate fashionista. Yeah. But the ultimate labs themselves, did you think they were built for the purpose of this specific killing game or were they already pre-made for the um, gopher project? I think they were for the gopher project. Yeah, so that wouldn't be an Ultimate Despair's lab. That would be his cover lab if he was Ultimate uh, Despair. Yeah, unless Monokuma renovated it. Oh, the line uh, Kibo uh, heard was, Hope moves forward. Mm -hmm. Which is literally Makoto yeah. and Hajime's catchphrases. Uh, so what do you think it's of It's the this? truth for <laughs> Adaga Rampa 4. Hope moves forward, it's the truth. Uh, what do you think of this? Uh, Five zero three nine three four eight five seven eight five seven three six two nine four zero five six nine two eight five eight one one zero three seven nine five nine three nine zero oh two nine two nine eight seven seven eight eight four eight. My goodness, you order murder. <laughs> <laughs> the only one who could have remembered that number is Kibo. Well someone well, huh? Kibo, he has the recording function. He could play that back what? anytime he wants. What? Because uh, there were only two people there to hear it, and one of them was Kibo, the other was Suiji. Um, not only that, but uh, Kibo did mention he did go there earlier in the night. Yeah, isn't that kind of suspicious, Kibo? Kind of weird. I think it's a red herring, though. Just like the foreshadowing of Kibo's death throughout the entire chapter. <laughs> <laughs> oh, about him testing the thing? <laughs> About him testing the hydraulic press, about him uh, being able to be shut off by multiple um, electronic oh. uh, disabling devices, <laughs> about him just getting bummed out that he's not recognized as human over and over again. Yeah, he's 
raising those death flags, so he's probably the killer. Uh, I noticed something in the ex the Exosol hangar bathroom. Yeah. That toilet. It's got like a tiny staircase up to it. Yeah, for the hidden monokumas. For the mastermind who's really short, Ryoma. Here we go. <laughs> Here we go. It's like a foot taller than him, <laughs> without the hat. Also, that lab, Brantaro's lab, was booby trapped. Oh yeah, the the door, the uh, wall after mm -hmm. you, uh, yeah, blew up. So it's the false door. Yeah, so it's locked, but Kuhichi has lockpick skills, so he's probably been in there. But if he's tried to tamper with that door, it'd probably blow up first, right? The fake door, at least, would. He probably he had to go after we unlocked it. Yeah. I'm not sure if he really... He could have done it while we were busy walking through that tunnel, I guess. Kokichi's been disappearing off and on a hell of a lot. Maybe so. that's where he's been hiding, if you can lock it from the inside again. I thought he was just hiding in um, the room behind the bookcase door. Yeah, he can do that too. He has that key card. It just kind of went away. Nobody mentions anymore. <laughs> uh, if only I could figure out what that key card was for. To think. It led to a ropeway. <laughs> if we go there and that dust is still there. Oh my god. Um, that stone, that stone message. Uh, I called that. I, I, I saw it. This world is mine, Kokichi Oma. Mm-hmm. Do you really believe that that's the complete message? I don't even buy that Kokichi, uh, had anything to do with it. He doesn't. I'm sure he does not. There's no reason for the for him to do it that way at all. Uh, so I, Kokichi's bluffing about that and so much more. I think uh, we're going to find it next chapter with more messages on it after we've confirmed that Kokichi got killed. Yeah, it does not look too good for Kokichi. But at the same time, it doesn't look so good for Kaito either. Yeah, he's probably the killer. He's just raising so many death flags in that bathroom. <laughs> That's not all he's raising. Um, I went back to the casino, and I looked at the prizes. Because mm -hmm. a few chapters back, I was looking at those prizes, and there was a bunch of handbooks that weren't available. I was guessing it, it was because we hadn't learned the truth about those characters, mm -hmm. including Samugi. Uh, no, Samugi's was one of the ones that were, were off the bat revealed, and you said, well, that's really boring, then. Uh, I don't remember, but however, they're all available now, so yeah. that was not the reason they weren't available. Yeah, no, you, um, you checked and uh, you said, oh, wait, no, some movies is already there. Oh. Yeah. Well, whoever... You didn't even remember, because their character is so forgettable. <laughs> I, I need to... I've been playing uh, the casino, waiting for you to catch up to me. Uh, I've been safe-scumming. I was too, treasure. and I was just failing... Treasure Hunter Monolith, Monolith yeah. on mean mode. Yes. Um, yeah, I managed to get up to a 99-99 bet, but I haven't won off of it yet. Yeah. Um. So, this time with my free times, I endeavored to fully max out Subugi, oh. just to see if she is at all interesting. Does she ever give any hints to anything more? No, and she has the worst skill that she gives you. Oh, she gave you a skill. Yeah, at the uh, maxed out, her skill. Yeah, yeah. Lay it it's on me. It's 2D love. Some panels will be filled in from the be uh, beginning, effective during <laughs> closing argument. It actually makes the game worse. <laughs> um, I spent time with Samugi as well, just once. Uh, I gave her Photoshop. Yeah, she really liked that, uh, it turns out. Um... I failed a present giving to Himiko. What? I thought she was like, oh, she's so lazy. She'd probably like the hammock. The relaxing. I was, going to get, I was thinking about giving her the workshare of Doom, but I stuck with magic mm -hmm. things. Ah, I should have gone with magic things. Um, I, I spent some time with Maki. I gave her the toy rice blocks because she was supposed to be the ultimate child caregiver. Oh, yeah. Uh, she she said, "Oh, why'd you give these to me? You know, I'm not the ultimate child caregiver. Do you want me to give these to the children when I get back?" And that that was a good present for her. So to uh, toys are good for Maki. And Kibo, I gave a practical gift to. 
you know, I would you I would consider this robophobic, but I'd have to accept this uh, anyways because uh, yeah, it's so, so practical. practical. It's like sparkly wipes or something. Yeah. Um, I noticed a cool little detail in the Ultimate Assassin's Lab. Mm. You remember our favorite feature of this game where you can slap away background objects? Yes. Um, in the Ultimate Assassin's Lab, there are targets, like, uh, shooting range targets. Uh-huh. And they drop more mono coins the closer to the center you slap them. Like <laughs> one, two, or three. That's a nice uh, detail. The same thing happens in the gym to, uh, like, a scorecard. Like, you show up for gymnasts or something. Like, you hold up a ten... If you hit the 10, it gave you, like, way more mono coins. So if you wanted to go out grinding mono coins to buy all the extras, there you go. Speaking of Samugi, I wrote down a quote of hers. Mm-hmm. One man's moe is another man's trash. <laughs> I liked it that she ordered it that way and not the other way around. So do Exosols. Oh, wait, before we get into that, what do you think about the... The case files in the Ultimate Detective Lab. Those haven't pertained to the story yet, and I think that's kind of strange. It is. It lends me to believe it's going to be part of the overall mystery and not like a specific case. You don't think they're just ambient? They keep bringing up how it's strange that some of them are photos and some of them are drawings. And some of them are completely blacked out. So I'm thinking these are details of previous... No, wait, that was the Gopher Project uh, file. Yeah, yeah, that was the one in the Ultimate Astronaut Lab. No, these ones, I think, are details of the previous killing games. Mm. If they are trapped in a living killing game simulator, and the reason some of them are photos and drawings, uh, drawings are ones for this cast... And they're obscuring them by doing drawings as a set of photos. Because remember, there are no cameras set up in this place. That we can see. Unless they're like the microscopic ones and they're filming like a 3D space video. Uh, so I have um, one all caps note this, this week. Mm -hmm. Hope's Peak! We finally, we finally got Hope's Peak. We finally got Hope's Peak, so it turns out that this entire cast did attend Hope's Peak, but the Hope's Peak that was reopened. Yeah, they just they just lied to us when Samu when uh, Tanko said that they all went to different high schools. They went to different classes. Yeah, so they were not previously friends. They did not interact with each other during Hope's Peak, but uh, they were all part of Hope's Peak. Which is nice to know that um, at some point the Future Foundation overtook Ultimate Despair enough to like create a stable society where Hope's Peak could exist again. Up to the point where oh, space viruses a sp made a space Despair virus. worse. Whoops, forgot about that space virus. <laughs> that, that zero escape space virus. <laughs> That also led to the end of the world. Um, One of those, those anime tropes. But D16 were immune to it. Maybe. 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 Oh, is so that do you think Kaito that's what's just got has Kaito. Some do you think Kaito just has some random uh, disease? Uh, you're right. Kind of... How did that not occur to me at all? It's kind of weird that Kaito would just be randomly ill with something, right? That's not even plot relevant. So did Kaito just lie about that? He could just be resistant to it, and uh, he's been trying to keep himself hopeful this entire time. That's why his personality is so mm. loud. Oh, like a self-fulfilling prophecy? I think also maybe every single time he's hit with a bit of despair or discomfort or something, uh, it is amplified because of that virus yeah it keeps coming back after the truck the trial uh trial ends and that oh. would explain it yeah that's why hope moves forward i guess huh the good thing he didn't see that that flashback light for hope's peak would have made him really hopeful probably cured him 
So let's dive into it. I have a note here that just says, fucking Kokichi, man. <laughs> so Kokichi is a big fat liar. Oh yeah, this is, this is news. Uh, <laughs> this is probably the biggest, most bold-faced lie. He's faking it so hard that he's the mastermind. Yeah, I'm the mastermind. Look, I can control the exit cells, which Monokuma kept saying that he couldn't. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I have this uh, remote control that I definitely didn't get from behind that keycard door. I have all the information I didn't get behind the secret library vault behind that keycard door where all the files are probably stored. And that's why I gotta protect the Monokuma robot, which more could be made of once one is destroyed by yeah. surrounding it in exosols. Oh my god. So you can't get to it, that, of course. That Monokuma is being protected by those exosols. Yeah, it's being protected <laughs> He's just by those exosols. He's just standing there. <laughs> I don't want to get seen by that Monokuma. He might sick those exosols. <laughs> so at some point, Kokichi decided to use the exosols to entrap Monokuma so that he couldn't give any more broadcasts so he could trick the cast into thinking that the killing game was over. And there's never more than one Monokuma active at a time, so instead of destroying the Monokuma, he's uh -huh. surrounded it. But to what end? Is that just his way of getting the killing game to stop? The making everybody think it's over? There'll never be another murder? Maybe he's trying to find the mastermind himself. Maybe he was interrogating him right then and there. Yeah, I see. And who's gonna bl who's gonna chicken first? No, I mean abso absolutely grabbed who he thought was the mastermind and stuck him in a bathroom. <laughs> oh, Kaito. Hmm. Uh, isn't it kind of weird that Kaito's ultimate lab is all the way at the top and also behind the black and white door? Isn't it kind of weird that Gokichi's lab is nowhere to be found? Uh, maybe Kokichi's not even a real ultimate student. So it's a double-pronged attack to, make, to making the killing game stop. One, you entrap Monokuma, you claim you're the mastermind and you're bored with the game, so there's no more broadcasts, no more motives being handed out. There's no motive right now, anyways. Because the... The reason why you're the black, you want to be the black and and escape is to escape. But and that's the second prong of the two pronged attack is to show everybody the quote unquote outside world that there's no reason to become the black and because there's no outside world. So the, nobody wants to kill anybody, right? Right. Except so, for the mastermind who's still active. Maybe. So. Kokichi's taking on the burden of being hated by the rest of the cast in order to get the killing game to stop? I think he's still fishing around for that mastermind. I think he thinks the mastermind's one of them, so... That's what he's determined. I think he thinks it's Kaito. So wouldn't Maybe it be... Maybe it is Kaito. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's Tsubugi, so her character's relevant. But all of this does not explain why Kibo's the murderer. Uh, <laughs> before we, we get into, uh... Who done it and who who done it to whom? Who done it? You mean why did Kibo do it? Is what we're gonna be discussing? <laughs> uh how about that mini game? What, Monolith Treasure Hunt? Yes. Uh the <laughs> the ultimate escape. So they're running around with the mono electro hammer. So I mentioned before I uh, kinda bugged the game and I fell at a weird angle and it ported me all the way to what I thought was the end with a clear sign. Oh, the word clear made out of exploding monocoins? Yeah, and I did not have enough characters to make it through that. Oh, so um, the you hypothesized if you could make it to that point with everybody, you might be able to yes. tank those explosions. And someone would be able to make it out. But, your hope that was the halfway point! Your hope was just being raised up. <laughs> uh, I don't think it would have been possible, to, even if you got all 16 there, to make it to the actual end. Maybe one day some tool-assisted speedrunner will test this theory and see if there's a, a secret ending. So, something kind of weird. Um, when Kokichi described what he was planning to do with those hammers to Miyu, 
Mew uh, made them anyways, but disagreed about uh, defying Monokuma. Mm-hmm. Kukichi never mentioned that instead of using those against the Exosols, they could legitimately use it in the tunnel that Monokuma provided from them since the beginning, so it's not even defying him. Mm-hmm. And just going out that way. Also, why didn't why when those hammers were completed, why didn't Kukichi just take everybody there? Why uh why did she only make five? I mean you only need a few, right? Or was it six? Only six? It was six. I think it was yeah, it was six. She didn't make one for herself or Gonta. I mean, not everyone needed one in the first place, though. So. And she made three of those chaff grenades. Those EMP bombs. That don't leave any residue or debris. So if they had been used when nobody was around, there'd be no trace of it. In fact, there are two of them unaccounted for. In fact, weren't they the murder weapon? As in Kaito was a robot? <laughs> what? As in this was a trap? Just like uh, Chapter 5 in Danganronpa 2? Uh, what? Kokichi willfully gave up that EMP grenade to Maki. Oh, so that the body could be discovered. And then and then set up the murder so that when the EMP grenade was thrown, the sensor would go off on the uh on the pressure piston. What's that called? Okay. Uh it's a hydraulic press. A hydraulic press and thus Maki killed Kokichi. No. <laughs> um, uh, there's going to be two people missing from the next trial. It's Kokichi and Kaito. Um, Kokichi killed himself. Gonna make the cast think Kaito did it, but Kaito is actually tied up in the room behind the bookshelf. A uh, quick problem with that: it's gonna be undone when trial time comes because not attending the trial is against the rules. No, it's not. Not voting. Is against the rules. You can't vote if you're not in the trial. But you won't die immediately until after a trial. Uh, it was in the second game where it was compulsory to attend the trial. Yeah, you are. There's no rule that you can't just not go to the trial, but you have to vote. So you have to show up to the trial. Because anyone who fails to vote gets executed or killed by the Exosols. <laughs> Who's going to control that Exosol? All right, so talk me through, uh, talk me through this case. Um, how did this go down then? So whoever accessed the panel at the end there, um, they did not have the hammer to switch it off. Wouldn't this? This so. This, oh yeah, this could have happened uh, before because this had to have happened after they reached the end of the, tri- the tunnel because Kokichi was still alive. It's kind of odd that the uh, panel is scratched up. Yes, Kivo can access it with um, the actual numbers, mm-hmm. but that wouldn't explain why the panel got so damaged. Yeah, that panel that was all been, scratched up for some reason. That must have been due to Exosols, right? Forcing their way through. Wasn't that due to Maki having a knife? Just whacking at it. She was the only one with like a weapon that wasn't the Electro Hammer. You know, for three days, Maki could have charged a hammer for one of those days and just gone in. Oh, did, oh, that's right. We were we were depressed for three days. Yeah, all those free times I didn't get to use. Thanks. <laughs> I could have maxed out so many. You characters. could just uh, you could have just uh, slept, sleep in bed and uh, not use your free time at all. But we don't recommend that, Suichi. <laughs> so I don't. I think somebody attempted to get in, and that's why the panels all scratched up. So they mentioned the exosols might not register the. Um alarm system. Right. The exosol uh, can just come and go. So if someone was piloting an exosol, they could probably get in. Right. Alternatively, Kibo has demonstrated that a lot of the um, functions in the um, Hangar? ultimate uh, Robot space lab? thing, <laughs> the facilities, a lot of the facilities don't recognize them as humans. Right. So he probably could go through that sensor without tripping the alarm, as long as the barrier's down and he can walk through. Uh, I think it was pointed out. That, I think Monokuma pointed out that even Kiba would trip it. Oh, really? I think so. I think he was the one that did. 
initially. Did he? I think so. I'm pretty sure he did. I don't remember that. That, that was on purpose to demonstrate it to us, because it was just him and Shuichi at the time, and I think it was, he was the one that walked out there. I thought Kibo, or whatchamacallit, it was Shuichi, which was the alarm. I pretty much guarantee I remember it, because I remember, because I thought he was going to get executed for it, and he had a really extremely worried sprite right when Monokuma popped up. Mm. So, at one point, in this case, somebody did use an Exosol to get into that hangar. Because Monokuma was being protected by four Exosols, and there's only three outside right now. The blue, yellow, and pink ones are still outside, but the green one is inside. And the red one or, was the one that was missing at first. Or unaccounted for. It's probably inside that hangar. But also there's a paint machine inside that hangar. Oh, yeah. I forgot all about that paint machine. To change the color of the exosols? That's the only reason that the paint machine would be there. So, what's the point of this? We're going to have a weird exosol identity case. Oh no, Kibo could have only piloted the green exosol, and there's two red exosols inside. The green exosol is only active during blank times and blank times. Uh... The red exosol can't lift more than 50 pounds. <laughs> So any so all they would have had to do is hit the Exosol with the Electro Hammer, and I guess they can just jump in and pilot it from there? Um, but how that they... would disable the Exosol and also drain the Electro Hammer. Right. So it's a one-swing thing. They could and only use also, one. If it depowers the Exosol, then you can't use it. How long does it disable the Exosol, though? Don't know, but probably... Not long, or probably long enough that it's not going to be useful by the time the other the other exosols catch up to you. Hmm. However, somebody managed to pilot an exosol because clearly somebody did to get inside. It was Kokichi, but naked. <laughs> How did they get back out? Who says they got out? Um, the ones who weren't inside already are still outside. <laughs> And the one uh, we have two were... people missing still. Yeah, but way. they were both inside the, the hangar already. Oh, the ones outside are on a uh, on a uh, working via remote control. Yeah, I'm saying if somebody took an exosol to get inside the hangar, mm -hmm. and thus went took us from four ex outside exosols to three, how do they get back out of the hangar without an exosol? Oh, they uh. There was a window in the bathroom they squeezed out of. They could have just squeezed in it. <laughs> uh, they flushed themselves down the toilet. <laughs> they painted their exosol camouflage and just walked out when the door was open. Like, I don't... I don't... I haven't done the investigation phase either. I haven't even gotten the Monokuma file, so I don't know if it's going to claim that Kaito is the victim, which he isn't. Or Kokichi's the victim, which he is. Uh, it's gonna claim that the victim is Kibo. Didn't you see all the flags? <laughs> Wouldn't the blood be blue? Like, um... Mecha no, it was Ma pink like a normal human being. Mechamaru's was blue? Uh, Miyu had a dye to make him a little bit more human. What if he's not dead at all and that's just paint? That could also be a thing. That could just be a paint canister and a, uh... Whichever I call it, his jacket. jacket. Yeah. So it's gonna be, so it's gonna be kind of like a mix of chapters five from one and two. In one, we didn't know who the victim was because it got his face blown off with a bomb, and everybody just assumed it was the mastermind. When it was really just a corpse we had already seen. Uh, in chapter two, or uh, Dong and Rampa two, chapter five was set up to appear to be a suicide, fake murder, like double, 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 a triple cross. It looked like a murder that looked like a suicide, but it was actually a murder. Is this going to pull the same gag where they're going to... I have a feeling we're not going to, they're not going to be able to investigate far enough to figure out who the victim, or identify who the victim is. By the end of the investigation phase here, and I think that's definitely going to be part of the trial. 
Like, if you raise the hydraulic press, are you going to be able to identify the victim, or is it just going to be a puddle of No, it's just going to be a bunch of goop. Okay. So, Kaito has to have some hand in this. There's no way that Kokichi would take Kaito's jacket and then get himself killed accidentally. So either Kokichi committed suicide and wanted people to think Kaito was dead, or Kokichi committed murder and wanted... Did I say Kokichi? Kaito committed murder, and he wanted everybody to think he was dead. I feel like Kokichi has figured out Kaito is the mastermind, and Kaito has remembered that he is the mastermind. Oh, because he wasn't, he wasn't around for the flashback light. Remember that. For that flashback light, but it did mysteriously appear, appear somewhere so, for Maki to find it later so on. So Kokichi could have used it on Kaito. And when it got to that part about uh, the 16 being selected, he would have remembered. Perhaps that he is uh, remnants of despair. Mm -hmm. I think he's been fighting back some kind of nagging despair in him this entire time, and that flashback light has made him remember who he is. Mm. What does Luminary mean? Mastermind? Uh, huh? Mastermind of the stars? No. I think it's it's like Paragon? Hmm. Remember way back in Chapter 2, Shuichi said of Kaito how dangerous it is to trust somebody here? That never paid off? Let's see, Chapter 2 was Kurubi. And the Kurubi wasn't really that close to Shuichi. Mm -mm. So, so, yeah, it was kind of a very odd thing to say at the opening. and uh, None of the murders since have been by somebody that he really trusted. Everyone trusted Gonta. Gonta would never lie. And that wasn't Gonta's fault at all. It was Kokichi's fault. Gonta can no protect everyone. So I'm not sure if why Kokichi did that exactly, if he's secretly a good guy. I think Kokichi was brought Kaito there for interrogation. Like, Kokichi suspected Kaito. No, no, I mean but... the Gonta murder. Oh, that. One, because he didn't want to get killed by Mew, and two, because he needed the next flashback light? I think light. he needed the next flashback light, and I think he feels guilty over it, but as the ultimate supreme leader, that's his thing, as he manipulates ultimate people. Liar. And, <laughs> and uh, Gonta has a very good disposition to be manipulated. Yeah, if you were going to have somebody sacrifice himself, Gonta's the one to do it. It, I don't think it was because Kokichi wanted to sacrifice Gonta specifically. It's no. just that he was, he was the, the one, one he that he could be to. used. Yeah. So, lock in your prediction. Who's the victim, for one? <laughs> who's the culprit? Uh, well, it's, <laughs> it's Kokichi via Kaito with a lot of red herrings for Kibo. Uh, which was which in the first part of that sentence? Oh, Kokichi is the victim. Kaito is the murderer. Kivo is going to be thrown a lot of red herrings for a trial. He's going to be thrown under the hydraulic bus. <laughs> uh, how did uh, how did Kaito kill him with the the thing that senses if there's a human being there? He's not. He Kokichi wasn't killed by hydraulic press. Ah, that was disposal of the corpse. Yeah, that was disposal of the corpse. What was he so killed? So it'd be unrecognizable. What was the weapon? Uh... Don't know, because we haven't seen a lot of the scene at all. I'm going to guess the Well, one. I have seen a bit of the scene, but... Uh, oh, I want to point out, that was one of the coolest moments. Like, There's a moment in Danganronpa 2 that still sticks with me. Uh, it's in the Funhouse murder. Uh, after you find the victim, you find Mechamaru. And he's in the Strawberry Tower. And you walk in, and the grape tower door is, like, barred with a chain and lock, padlock. And a tower, a pillar has fallen over, and there's a puddle of blood and a hammer. And you see the scene, and then later on, you're like, okay, let's... Nagato, or... Yeah, Nagato's like, let's go see this from the grape tower side. And you're like, that's not gonna work. The door's barred shut. Let's go check it anyway. And you go there, and you walk in. And it's exactly the same as the Strawberry Tower. 
and you're whisked away right to the trial, and you have this moment of like, wait, what? Doesn't make any sense. This chapter almost got up to it right when Shuichi walked in. And then uh, in hand. he's got the hammer in his hand and the screen pops on behind him and Monokuma's back and says the killing game never ends. That was a great moment. You thought there was going to be more daily life. Yeah, I wasn't I wasn't sure that this was good. I, I knew when we walked into this room the very first time and Ebo tried out the press like, oh, this is going to be the scene of the murder, and the hydraulic press is the weapon. The hydraulic press is definitely not the weapon. Yeah. But it is relevant. So, if Kokichi was killed first, it wouldn't trigger? Because he's no longer a living human. A corpse is not a person. It would have been really difficult for Kaito to kill Kokichi in the Exosol hangar. If Kokichi, With an Exosol. If Kokichi had the remote. If Kokichi lost the remote to Kaito. And Kaito is extremely weak from despair disease. Maybe despair disease gives him stupid strength. Like a different <laughs> disease. It's kind of like you kind of lose, gain more strength the less you care about your life. Oh, the death flag, uh, survival flag property? Yeah, this is really, a really tough trial. Like I don't even. Well, I mean, Kaito did it. I don't. I don't see the logical steps you could follow to prove it, which I guess is the point of the investigation and trial phase. You're gonna have to prove who's the victim first. Like we're gonna have to find out, investigating that bathroom that Kaito's still alive somehow. And where the hell did he end up going if he couldn't get out of the hangar? I mean, Kokichi. If he was still alive, also would have had to have done the same thing and uh, had to have left the hangar somehow as well. Yeah, if he was still alive. If he was still alive, so... I mean, regardless of whether it's Kaito or Kokichi, there has to be some way to do it. Well, Kokichi has the Exosol remote. He could just leave via Exosol. I mean, if Kaito kills Kokichi, then he could do the same. With the Exosol remote. Hmm... Yeah, it's a stumper. I'm gonna have to say... Yeah. I just can't figure out how Samugi did this. <laughs> uh, I just have to say that Kokichi's the victim and Kaito's the murderer, but I can't tell you why outside of it makes perfect story sense. I'm in agreement with that. I think Kaito is the mastermind, and, or at least he's remnants of despair. He is I He's either both remnants of despair and the mastermind, or just remnants of despair. I think he has a despair disease. Doesn't this kind of throw a wrench in my they're in infinite killing game? Chloe theory? thing? Yeah. Yeah. Well. What, what the hell was Rantaro talking about it not being his first killing game then? Maybe it has to do something with his ultimate ability. Ultimate killing game simulator. Were these 16 chosen via killing game? They were Chosen by the Future Foundation. So says this flashback chosen, light. I mean, uh, they were all that remained that could have been sent out. Um, um, the flashback lights, I don't think, are lies, at least. How? But this one is different because Monokuma didn't say there was one around. It was just placed there suspiciously. But it all connects. Did. It would have had to have been placed there by Kaito or Kokichi, right? I mean, it could have been left there by Monokuma once uh, he was no longer being protected. But they found it while he was being protected. Oh yeah, that's right. Which, yeah. Is, which is what made it so suspicious. I think then that means it has to have been Kokichi who left it out then. But then what was his purpose in doing so? I think it's so that Maybe Kokichi finally got Kaito the crack. And that's so that Kokichi can ex start to explain that um, one of them among the uh, 16 was Reverence of Despair, and it's Kaito. I don't think Kokichi can readily say that without reasonable proof. Oh, cause nobody because would everybody him. would trust Kaito too much. Maybe that's also part of why Kokichi's been trying to get everyone to suspect each other more. 
the word of a liar is not worth too much. So even if he wants to tell the truth, maybe he just couldn't. And his purpose in claiming to be the mastermind is just to throw the mastermind off his game. To maybe it's so that their world makes sense for the time being. I mean, Kukich is definitely not the mastermind. He's locked down Monokuma, and uh, I think what it was was just so that they could start getting their heads around the general scenario of what's going on. So they're focusing on the killing game? Yeah, maybe. While he's interrogating Kaido. Yeah, I'm really I'm really excited to see how this turns out. Uh, did you have any uh, other wild theories and speculations you'd like to posit? So, I am so certain that Kaito is a remnant of despair. But obviously, Sabuki's the mastermind, right? I mean, why, <laughs> why does this character exist? I, I also would like to say good on Himiko for making it so far. I didn't think you had it in you in the least. Like, at no point uh, up until the end of Chapter 3 did I think that Himiko would be a final survivor. I thought she was just going to fall over and die at some point. I thought she was going to die, like, immediately after uh, her magic show. Because I predicted in the very first episode that she would have a magic show murder. And she would be the victim. But then it wasn't the case, so I thought she would die immediately after that in Chapter 3. And she didn't. So, good on Yeah, you. maybe she's the murderer here. Who knows? So, Kaede is the mastermind. Uh, <laughs> until next time. Bye, Yonara! Talking Rampa is my reason to live. <laughs>